Our next speaker is Yuna Park. Her title of her talk is My Vagina Did What? Evaluating a mobile app for 3D and Terracell anatomy in post-hysterectomy women. Um, Yuna's presentation or abstract was accepted at AAA Experimental Biology for poster presentation. Here's Yuna. Thank you, Dr. Lee. Before we get started, I would like to point out my email address and Twitter handle again for those of you just joining us. If you have any questions later on, please contact me through either of those. I would also like to direct your attention to the right side of the screen. You can download the My Prolapse mobile app anytime during the presentation using the QR codes on the right. It is free and available on both Android and iOS. Also, please be aware that this presentation may contain graphic images. The pelvic floor muscles line the bottom of the pelvic cavity, forming a hammock that supports the pelvic viscera. If the pelvic floor dysfunctions or becomes weak, you can get pelvic floor disorders, which include urinary incontinence, fecal incontinence, and pelvic organ prolapse. When the pelvic floor becomes weak, these organs within the pelvis might lose support and move where they shouldn't. And in a pelvic organ prolapse, the organs will eventually bulge into the vaginal wall and outside the vaginal opening. When the patient is relaxed, this is what a typical vaginal opening looks like. And when the patient is asked to bear down like they are defecating, this is called the Valsalva maneuver. And if they have a prolapse, it will appear like this with a vaginal bulge appearing outside the vaginal opening. Now it should be noted that there are many types of pelvic organ prolapse, depending on which organ is bulging into the vagina. Enteroseal is one type of pelvic organ prolapse in which a peritoneal sac containing the small intestine herniates into the vaginal wall. It is usually discovered in elderly females who have given multiple births. And enteroseal is strongly associated with hysterectomy because the surgery itself predisposes individuals for enteroseal. The next image may be a bit graphic, but here is a patient presentation of enteroseal. You can see the small intestine bulging into the vagina in this sagittal MRI. Due to lack of public awareness of prolapse, there are a lot of misconceptions about the vaginal bulge you see here. Patients might think it's an infection because it smells funny, or they might think it's cancer. And studies based on focus groups have found that these patients experience a lot of anxiety, stress, shame, and fear surrounding their condition. They also experience decreased body image and quality of life. In addition, they don't feel comfortable discussing this very common issue with their providers, and it prevents them from seeking medical advice. Despite the increasing prevalence and the complicated anatomy, there are few resources to educate patients on their prolapse. As a result, the aims of our project are to, one, develop an interactive 3D mobile app to assist healthcare providers in educating post-hysterectomy women on the anatomy of enteroseal, and two, assess the educational value of the app as a visual aid during counseling and its ability to decrease patient anxiety and increase patient understanding. We first started with resource development. We obtained a de-identified CT urogram and MRI pelvis of a female diagnosed with enteroseal post-hysterectomy. This was approved by the Colorado Multiple Institutional Review Board. And then we segmented the models with 3D Slicer. Here are the bony structures and a close-up of the pelvic viscera. These are isolated views of the small intestine, the vagina, and the pelvic floor muscles. Then the models were smooth and refined in ZBrush Core. And afterwards, the smooth models were textured and animated in Maya. We took the animation made in Maya and incorporated everything into Unreal Engine 4, which is a game engine. And if you've ever heard of po the popular game Fortnite before, Fortnite was created using Unreal Engine. The app currently supports both English and Spanish, and you can rotate, zoom, and pan the model. And as an extra bonus, we also included tips on how to prevent a prolapse as well. Once resource development was finished, we received feedback from 15 healthcare providers at Denver Health. We asked the providers whether this mobile app is needed for patient education in the clinic. 
They responded to a visual analog scale ranging from not needed at all to essential. And to look at the responses statistically, the responses were assigned a value of zero to 100, such that not needed at all was considered a zero and essential was considered 100. And overall, based on the median of 100, the providers felt that the mobile app was needed for patient education. We also asked the providers whether they would use this mobile app to explain Enteroseal to their patients. They responded to a visual analog scale ranging from never to always. And overall, based on the median of 100, most of the providers would use this app during the clinic. We also asked the providers whether they would recommend this mobile app to another provider. They responded to a visual analog scale ranging from very unlikely to very likely. And overall, based on the median of 100, most of the providers would recommend the app to another provider. Based on the comments by the providers, we improved the, the user interface of the app by adding a Zoom slider and a reset button. The next step is to evaluate patients, but this is currently halted due to COVID-19. But to summarize, patients diagnosed with enterosteal will be randomized into two equal groups, one is the standard counseling group, where the provider conducts counseling as they usually do. And the other group is the mobile app group, where the provider uses the mobile app as a visual aid during counseling. Patients will fill out pre- and post-intervention surveys assessing anxiety and understanding. So far, it seems that the mobile app could be a valuable resource for healthcare providers. And future patient data collection will assess the educational value of the app, and whether it decreases patient anxiety and increases patient understanding. We are hoping that effective counseling will address their fears and put an end to the self-blame. Future iterations of the app will include other types of pelvic organ prolapse. And overall, we are hoping that this app will increase public awareness by filling in some of the knowledge gaps of prolapse. I would like to thank my committee members and everyone who assisted me with this project. Thank you for listening, and please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you, Yuna, for your talk. We will take any questions if you have them. Please feel free to submit them um, to the chat box. Um, I do have a question, Yuna. You said that there are multiple types of pelvic or organ prolapse, um, and why did you select uh, enterocele as the focus for this um, project? That is a good question. Um, yes, there are many types of pelvic organ prolapse. So if it's the bladder, the bladder that's bulging into the vagina, that's called the cystocele. If you have the rectum bulging in, that's called the rectocele. Um, and so there are many different types of prolapse, but due to the time constraints of this capstone project, uh, we could only proceed with one type of pelvic organ prolapse in the mobile app. And my mentor, Dr. Muffley, is a urogynecologist at Denver Health and he frequently sees uh, post-hysterectomy patients. And so we chose enterocele because of its strong association to hysterectomy. Thank you, perfect. And um, let's see, I had uh, one other one as well. So with um, the building of this model and gaming app, what was the time, how much time did it take? And what was the, um, would you say that this is an easy thing for others to do? I would say rather than it being, it's easy to learn the software. Um, the only problem is the time commitment. So I think starting from August to February is how long it took. So about six months there to create the mobile app. Um, and this of course included creating the 3D models, smoothing them um, and creating the mobile app as well. But those six months also included trial and error um, because no one's created a protocol like this before. So I'm hoping that once I create a protocol, which is in the works right now, um, future students will have a much faster and easier time to create um, similar mobile apps. And do you plan on making that protocol available to others? Yes. Widely, okay. Excellent. Okay. That looks like all the questions we have. So thank you, Yuna, so much for sharing your presentation with us.